Uh, thanks, Jared, and uh, good morning, everyone, or good evening as it is from here. Uh, let me just share a screen with our slides. Um, I'm Don Schumann. As Jared said, I'm a maths, I'm a learning advisor in mathematics with the Mathematics Education Support Hub at Western Sydney University. And my colleague Jim Pettigrew is a lecturer with the Mathematics Education Support Hub. Um, over the last, I guess, 12 months, because I think Christian um, modified and upgraded the JSX graph extension for numbers about 12 months ago. We've been playing around with JSX graph as an extension to numbers and as a way to introduce graphical capabilities into numbers questions. We had been using um, GeoGebra a little before that, but we've largely switched over to the to the JSX graph now. So what is JSX graph? Well, it's a JavaScript library that's been developed at, at Beirut University and a way of producing interactive graphics, not only in numbers, but in websites in general. So it can be it can be used in in any sort of general website and we'll show an example of that later. Uh, it's freely available under Creative Commons license. Like Numbers, it has a, a user community and it's quite well documented and it includes its own scripting language called Jesse Code, which we've tended to use for most of the questions that, that we've created. Um, the reasons that we've moved to JSX Graph, I think the largest one has been the minimization of reliance on external systems. So using GeoGebra in the past, we found we were generating graphics in GeoGebra, which then had to load into the numbers environment. And there was a, a distinct delay in, in doing that, uh, where we found that using JSX Graph, which is effectively internal with numbers, it happens much quicker. It also means we're not reliant on another server. Um, it integrates with the numbers variables and marking algorithms quite nicely so that we can build questions with a lot of variation in them using the numbers variables. And we can mark based on what students do with the graphic elements. And uh, Jim gave a talk about this at the numbers forum earlier. Um, you, it's also possible to integrate if you have libraries of ticks or other latex graphics uh, elements, it's in, it's possible to import those into the, into JSX graph and then overlay it with an active um, geometry or a movable geometry, so that you can make use reuse perhaps static elements that you might have. I think Jim will probably talk more about that later. And Jim, please interrupt me if I, if you've got something to to add, because as you may tell, we, we've really rehearsed this talk to the nth degree. I think we talked about it last two weeks ago. So we thought we'd show you some examples of the things that we've done with JXX Graph and what we've found it's capable of. I'm sure we haven't even touched the surface of, or delved too much below the surface of what can be done. Um, it seems to be a very versatile system like the numbers system. So this question, is a fairly basic example. Um, students are asked to move the points in the number plane. It's actually part of a multi-part question in the first part. And in fact, what I'll do is show the question. Um, so in this question, the students are asked to, first of all, there's a randomly generated linear relationship that's put in here. The students are asked to generate a series of Y values, and then using uh, the JSX graph in the next part, they're then asked to identify where they should go. So what are we looking at? Six, and that one needs, no, I've got something in the wrong place. Oh, because that's a four. So, <coughs> pardon me, students, can drag the, the elements there and then submit that part and it's marked based on the position of the points in the JSX graph element. Um, it's a fairly simple uh, board. 
the script for the board is somewhere here. Um, so basically to, cre to create a board, you define a, a size for it in pixels. You set the limits for the X and Y coordinates. And in this case, we're using variables to set the Y coordinates, you'll notice. It goes from X equals minus eight to eight, but Y goes from whatever the max Y value is, that's a, a, um, a numbers variable. And then basically generate the elements that you want, and that's all there is to it. Within the parts in the marking algorithm for this part, uh, we use a custom marking algorithm, which takes the, the locations of the three points and then compares them with what they should be according to other variables that we've generated within the variable section. Um, and something like that really is quite simple to, to develop, but it's a little bit different way of asking students have, um, to do these sort of questions involving linear relations to get them more involved with, with what's going on rather than just the algebra. Uh, where do I want to go back to here? Um, our second demo, we've sort of delved a little more into using JSX graph, and this is using variables in the Jesse code. Well, we've done that a little bit in the other one. Uh, here we've done done it to a greater extent. And using not both num numbers variables in the graphics so that we're importing variables from numbers into JSX graph, not just reading back the JSX graph values into numbers. So it's a two-way uh, two discussion. And also defining a function. Uh, yeah, and this, this is where the two different modes of, of working tend to come. Um, so I've mentioned here with and without safe mode. Let me show you the two questions. Um, so this question, students are presented with a graph. It's, it's a trig graph of some sort, and then they're asked to identify which one it is. And if we try another question like this, we should get something that's a sine or a cosine curve as well. Um, so the, the graph is being generated as a, a JME expression and then imported into the, into the graphic. And so we have our code here again. And we're graphing the, the function here. So function here is a, is a JME variable or a, or a numbers variable, which is being imported into the, into the Jesse code to generate the function. Now, of course, one problem here is that these braces, if you're working with JavaScript, the braces are what are used to define functions and various other things in, in JavaScript. So if you want to use or, de or integrate a function which you're defining in JavaScript, this mode doesn't, doesn't work. And what we've found is, well, this is a, a different question, again, using a, um, a JSX element. It looks like a very simple question, but actually the, the JavaScript or the, the JSX graph part behind it is quite a bit more complicated. Because in this question, we're using some of the JavaScript elements down here, if I can find them. Yeah. Um, line 57, yeah. Yeah, line 57, we're defining a, a JavaScript function, which needs to be in braces. Now, in general, if JME reads this, it's going to assume that this is a, a, numbers, a numbers variable. So in order to, to stop it doing that, we have to put the, script, the, the text into a JavaScript safe environment, which means that numbers doesn't scan this for variables. 
that's okay. But then we also want to move some numbers variables into the um, into the question, and so we have another string here which is using literals to take our JavaScript variables and oh sorry, take our numbers variables and put them into the JavaScript environment. So both ways are possible. Um, it just takes a little bit of thought and, and pre-planning, I guess, to uh, to develop that. Jim, did you have anything more to say on this one? Because you oh, no, I think I think uh, you've already made the point that what's different between this one and the first one we looked at is that here um, user input is being used in the marking algorithm, and um, there's also um, numbers variables being used within the Jesse code. So um, there's, there's kind of two-way interaction happening with the variables and the JSX graphic. Yeah, I think in this case, we're actually just, the, the, the student's just being asked to put in a number. So the, the graphic is, is purely there for information purposes, but it's written in such a way that I think this triangle will change orientations if you read reassign the question as well as changing variables and which side students are asked to generate. Um, and it's a fairly generic or a fairly standard sort of marking algorithm in this case. But again, it's possible to, to move pretty much whatever you want into the, into the Jesse code uh, and to use the JavaScript functions as well as uh, numbers, variables, but sometimes with a little bit of care. Uh, so that's the variables or using variables. Um, one place where I had a almost a major crash with using JSX graph was I wanted to, to build some questions for diagnostic test. This is one of them where the responses for the multiple choice were JSX elements. And when I did this first and I generated the JSX elements as numbers variables, they didn't appear at all. And after some frantic emails to Christian, uh, the problem was that a JSX graph element as a numbers variable is an HTML element, which can only appear once in the page. And since it has to appear in the correct answer area, it then isn't shown in the numbers question. So the way around this turned out to be to use the numbers, um, the numbers, uh, sorry, the JSX elements, not in the variables. In fact, the variables are just asking which function to look at, but the JSX elements are written as functions. And then we use a function call for each of the responses, for each of the multiple choice responses to generate the graphs. So again, it can be done and um, it works quite well. And if you want to generate graphic elements in multiple choice, it gives a way to, to do that. Is there anything else in that one, Jim? No, that's pretty good, that one. Okay. So that's some of our uses for numbers, for, for JSX graph. Um, the other thing that we've played around with, and Jim in particular has done some work here. So Jim, do you want to talk more about this? Is connecting yeah. ticks elements with um, the JSX graph environment. Yeah, thanks. So I, I gave a talk, I'll put a link in the chat. I gave a talk, as you mentioned, Don, um, at the Numbers User Meeting uh, Conference uh, only a few weeks ago, perhaps months ago. Yeah, anyway, I'll put a link in the chat um, because Christian has kindly put the recording up and um, slides and various links to files as well um, that we used in the, in the talk. Um, so very briefly, I'll just, if I can share my screen, Don, I'll just... Um, sure. I'll just show everybody. 
some examples. Just we'll just jump straight to some examples. So um, what I've developed is a very simple workflow that allows you to um, take LaTeX generated vector graphics and ultimately um, import them into numbers um, as SVG files embedded within JSX graph um, objects and, um, and to sync up the coordinate system that you're using to generate the graphics. I use the, the library ticks um, that I've also used um, PS tricks in, in LaTeX uh, to sync up the coordinate system in whatever um, graphics generating um, library you're using in LaTeX with the coordinate system in JSX graph in, in, in numbers. Um, and so what that means, as Don said, what that means, I'll show you an example here. What that means is that you can take, uh, this is perhaps not, not the most compelling example because it's not that complex, but you can, you can take um, some uh, vector graphics that you, you know, perhaps already had already generated in uh, written code for in LaTeX. And, um, you know, I, I just happened to grab the boilerplate from this um, Stack Overflow page um and then just uh, adapted it a little bit so you can see the code there um put it into a template file that i've created which is this one here um, put the tick z code into this region if you can see where my cursor is compile to dvi and then convert from dvi to svg using this tool here uh, which um, comes with it, it comes packaged with the um, LaTeX distri distribution I use, which is uh, MicTech. Um, it would no doubt be used in found as well on the web. Um, so then you have your SVG file, then you can modify the SVG file if you need to. Um, in I use a free, a free version of Adobe Illustrator, a vector graphics manipulation uh, uh, application called Inkscape. And, um, and then you can save that as a plain SVG file and import that into Numbers um, and then um, embed it within your question as an image. Um, so this is an image sitting within, and I'll show you the code. This is an image sitting within um, a JSX graph board. You know, and what this um, boilerplate, this template does is it also generates the bounding box for the image. So provided um, the uh, image that you generate using ticks in LaTeX doesn't breach the uh, bounding box, the, the rectangle that wraps everything up, um, then the coordinate systems will talk perfectly to each other. That is the ticks uh, coordinate system with the JSX graph coordinate system. And so that enabled me and Don, mostly Don actually, when he was building this question, um, to you know, add uh, dynamic geometric elements um, to the static SVG file um, that we imported, um, you know, via that workflow. So that the the, the or dynamic, I've got to put that in you know, air quotes. Um, the the variable driven, if you like, geometry, which is basically the uh, minute and hour hand. Okay, so that varies, you know, when you try another question then. A minute and a, yeah. So that the, the, these are geometric elements that have been added to um, the board to the to the JSX graph object um, using numbers variables, and so it's, it's really just overlaid on the the SVG image sitting underneath it. And here's another example here. Um, so this image of the syringe was generated using ticks. Actually, I'll tell a lie. It was generated using PS tricks, but it could easily be generated using using ticks. Um, and because the coordinate systems line up perfectly, I've been able to, you know, add these um, dynamic elements um, in the Jesse code. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, th this this uh, could have been all generated in JSX graph, sort of natively, if you like, um, without any need for this workflow. Um, but one of the advantages of the workflow, I think, is that 
a lot of us who've been using LaTeX for a long time to generate graphics um, will already have a whole bunch of, you know, sometimes quite complex graphics that might have taken some effort to code and to generate um, sitting on the shelf, so to speak. And so this workflow would allow you to take it off the shelf and get it into um, numbers ultimately uh, in such a way that um, you can overlay geometry on the graphic, knowing that um, your coordinates in uh, JSEC graph are talking perfectly to the coordinates you use to originally generate the graphic in LaTeX. Um, okay, that's all I've talked enough. Okay, thanks, Jim. I'll just share very quickly the, the last example that we said to numbers and beyond. So um, we've also used JSX graph to embed some JSX graph elements into, well, actually into our learning management system um, via iframe. So this, this element is two, two uh, div elements which talk to one another. And again, if I can bring it up quickly. I'm sorry, my cat is also deciding to get in on the act here. Oh, of course, that one's decided to go to sleep. Um, so this is something that I took from the JSX graph wiki and did a little bit of modification to. It, it graphs the sine and cosine of the angle as you drag it around the circle and the second element. And to do that, basically, I've just written a web page and then dropped it as an iframe inside our learning management system. And that's also a way of getting it into a, a content management system. I've done the same thing with the university web page so that we can include dynamic elements within some of our math support pages. Uh, so that's a very brief overview of what we've done. Thank you. We're happy to take any questions or uh, if anyone has any discussion or thoughts on the process. Also be happy to hear of any other possible uses for, that you might think of for using this sort of geometric element in, in questions in the assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Don and Jim. Um, that's also an excellent presentation. Um, and I think uh, many of us could uh, join me in uh, actually appreciating our speakers this morning using the reactions on Zoom. So on the questions, uh, I will start with the ones on the, the Moodle chat. Um, just as you're looking that up, just one thing I will mention in the presentation, uh, mm -hmm. all the presentation slides have links to the numbers questions, uh, which have all been published. So if anyone wants to look at those particular questions, the slides are up on the EAMS site. Christian's put it up already. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so they actually the first question uh, this morning is from Christian and he's asking, uh, what would be what what will make the writing on the JS code in numbers more convenient? Is uh, uh, looking at whether you 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 could make your function for plotting example. Uh, you know, to be more helpful for number questions variable. Um, we automatically made a variable in the chess code. What do you think? <laughs> um, yeah, maybe if it's not, yeah, yeah. Is the question clear on the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I, Jim, have you got any suggestions? I, I think I found it reasonably straightforward to, to do. I, I think we did get Christian's help a little way in in generating the function, making the function yeah. a, essentially a random variable. But um... yeah, I can't, I, I've just started playing, this is maybe a bit off topic, but I've just started playing with using JSX graph experimentally entirely outside of numbers um, so that I can kind of bring in buttons and other you know, text input and, and and radio dials and other things, things like that, um, other, other JSX graph elements, sorry, other JavaScript elements um, to sort of enhance the interactivity of the, of the JSX graph object. Um, 
and I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind sort of exploring those kinds of possibilities a bit more uh, within numbers um, because I'm not sure that Jesse Code would allow me to do that. Um, so an example is I, I, I can't show it to you, but an example is I've just been playing around with visualizing um, the R squared, um, you know, um, statistic for simple linear regression. And so you can kind of switch on and off the sum, of, you know, total sum of squared regression, sum of squared error, sum of squared. Um, you know, so it's 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 all nice and visual. There's lots of toggles and buttons, um, and different visual elements. And so I'm 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 combining the JSX graph object with all this other stuff around it, um, which is all all in JavaScript. And so you know that that'd be if 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 that is possible, great. I'd love to learn about it. If not, that that you know might be something that could enhance the use of JSX graph within numbers. Mm -hmm. so, so could you think of another maybe way to make the JS code more e easier for maybe beginners or something? Well, I mean, it's already, uh, it's a scripting language. So it, it yeah, I, I think that, you know, um, it, it, there's always a balance between, um, you know, using code and having control and, you know, having um, syntax, et cetera, and an API that, you know, makes the coding task simple. Um, the, the, you know, there's, a, there's a, in my experience with this sort of thing, there's always a cost. You know, if, if you want greater simplicity, there's going to be a cost in terms of control, and, and it kind of goes both ways. If you want more control, there's a cost in terms of, um, you know, just just you're going to end up with more complex, low-level code. So, you know, I, I think Jesse Code is already a scripting language. Um, I mean, I, as I say, I've been using the JavaScript language, um, the the syntax, I suppose, uh, API is another way of putting it um, for JSX graph. That is lower level, but I have way more control. I feel I have way more control than using the scripting language, um, Jesse Code. So that's a long way of saying I, th I think it's about right is my take on it, Jesse Code. I wouldn't want to, if it, I think if it were any simpler, then there, then you'd be hitting some costs in terms of what you could do with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's also a very good library of, uh, or a wiki of, uh, el of examples of JSX graph elements um, that, that's that been put up by, J I think it's jsxgraph.org is the, is the, is the web page. Um, so that's a that's a good way to start. That one with graphing the the sine and cosine of the angle. I started with something in the wiki and then made a few modifications. Yeah, thank you. Great. Um, another reaction? Uh, I think we are free to place up our hands on Zoom and and we face our questions also our comments. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so so we can thank our speakers again um, for the talk. Um, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this was really uh, an excellent talk.